Today I will talk to you about ratio analysis, another flip lesson for Business Studies 3 student. This is all about analysing financial statements, namely looking at the income statement in terms of profitability, cash flow statements in terms of their liquidity, and the balance sheet, very important statement. We look at stability, liquidity, gearing and solvency, all these terms will be explained to you as we go along. Why do we have ratio analysis in the first place? Well we want to examine the profitability and for that I will look at the net profit ratio, the gross profit ratio and the return on owner's equity. We want to work out how stable the business is. For that we look at the current ratio and debt ratio. Liquidity is the amount of cash been generated through the business and the ability to pay short term debts and with that we look at the current ratio. And lastly solvency. How solvent is a business over a longer period of time? Its ability to meet its longer term commitments and for that we look at the debt equity ratio. Let's start with profitability. Simply it's the earning performance of a business. It depends on how much a business can maximise its profits by increasing its revenues and minimising expenses. So the gap between revenues and expenses we want to be as big as possible which represents the profit. Let's look at the income statement. It's also called a profit and loss statement or sometimes a revenue statement so it all means the same. It's used to measure profitability and or earning capacity, the ability to earn um, money given the amount of assets or money that we have employed in the business. So as I said to you before, profit is simply by looking at the income, the revenue and from that take away our expenses also sometimes called our costs. We use the figures from the income statement to calculate the gross profit ratio and the net profit ratio. Let's look at an income statement in more detail. Up the top we've got the level of sales and from that we take away a cost of sales, a cost of goods sold. So if I'm operating a, a, a clothing store, all the gross um, sales that I make, or the sale price is calculated here and all the cost of the clothes that I bought in order to put up for sale is represented here. So this is really the engine room of the business, so the gross profit is a very important measure. From that we have uh, three types of expenses, the selling expenses, you can see here advertising and sales salaries form the biggest part, giving a subtotal of 522,000. Admin expenses, office salaries here you can see again um, salaries being a bigger proportion, they represent $485,000 as a subtotal and the financial expenses here. And a big proportion there is interest so straight away I know that the business has borrowed and I'll be interested looking at the balance sheet to see um, the level of borrowings and um, the level of solvency in the longer term. You can see that um, if you add these subtotals here together you'll get the total here of 1.144 million and that is taken away from that figure there to derive at our bottom line profit of $656,000. Let's look at the gross profit ratio. It's amount of gross profit generated per dollar of sales. As you saw on the previous statement, on the income statement, it's sales less cost of goods sold giving us our gross profit. So it's amount of sales available to meet expenses resulting in net profit. So th that's the profit in the first instance and then from that we take away the other expenses then we derive our net profit. Let's have a look at the, the actual ratio, the formula. It's gross profit divided by sales, fairly simple. Here's an example which I will work through with you in a moment. So in this instance we've got 1.8 million, that's the gross profit, divide that by the net, the net sales of 5 million um, giving us a um, gross profit ratio of 36%. Those figures 
um, are derived from here the, the uh, gross profit there and the sales there so I'm going to take you through I walk you through how to calculate the actual ratio so there are those figures I've picked out from the income statement here's my ratio uh, formula gross profit divided by sales simply what I do I take the 1.8 million divide that by the 500 or the 5 million I beg your pardon and you get 0.36 you multiply that, apply that by 101 to derive your um, percentage of 36 percent what does the gross profit ratio show? well it shows the effect effectiveness of inventory selection the valuation, the pricing uh, in terms of the markup and also discounting so what that means is that if, if I have good inventory selected then people will want to buy it um, if it's not so good um, or so fashionable if you like then it will hang around I will then have to discount uh, my sale price um, and therefore that, re that results in a lower markup so the markups amount the percentage amount that I put on top of the cost price of the goods that I um, put in the store for example if I buy a uh, an article of clothing for fifty dollars and I have a markup of a hundred percent so I put another fifty dollars on top of that so my sales price that I sell to my customers is a hundred dollars obviously the higher the ratio the more profitable if it's low um, then we might need to look at cheaper suppliers and we may be able to um, get stuff online even another way of doing that is to increasing the markup now let's look at the net profit ratio very similar to the gross profit ratio it's a matter of net profit generated per dollar of sales net profit is sales less cost of goods sold less all of your expenses so it's the amount of sales that results in net profit here is the um, the the formula simply net profit divided by sales and here's a numerical example which I've derived from the income statement that you saw earlier so net profit was 656,000 divide that by um, 5 million which results in 13.12 percent so in another way of saying it if I um, sell something for uh, $100 then I know straight away that $13.12 is the amount that I'm going to pocket as the owner or we're going to pocket as owners so I got the net profit from the bottom line here down here 656,000 divide that by the 5 million let's just follow that through there's my um, formula um, I plugged the 656 into there in the, in the 5 million there giving giving me 0.1312 um, to multiply that by 101 and there you have the percentage um, of my net profit ratio what does the net profit ratio show well obviously the higher the better um, the more profit we've made we do need to compare this to previous periods in the, or in some instances we can compare that to industry averages if it's low then expenses may need to be reduced so we need to look at how we can reduce and, and, and to, in order to make some savings and unfortunately the biggest cost factor tends to be wages so we need to look at how we employ people for how long and, and in the worst case scenario we may need to let somebody go we can also look at the other side by looking at the sales okay and we can in do that by increasing advertising or changing the sales price now we come to the return on equity now this is a very very important um, ratio because if you're going to go in business you want to make a certain rate of return because you need to compare that to other ways of earning a return um, or other other ways that you can um, put your money to work for example you can put it in a bank or in a share market for example so it looks at how effective the funds contributed by the owners have been to generate profit 
It's commonly called the return on investment for the owners. And it's something that um, you try and work out before going into business when you do set up your business plan. So how do we calculate it? Well, you take the net profit and divide that by the total equity, which is the amount of total amount of ownership by the owners in the business. For example, here, um, the profit is 21,000, 21,500, and divide that by total equity, which gives us a return on equity of 38.1%. Now, 38.1% is considered good, just as a general benchmark. Anything above 15%, 15 to 20%, uh, is is okay. Now, let's have a look at the balance sheet where these figures came from. Let's just examine it first up. On one side, you've got the assets. They are on the left, as you can see. So they're the things that the business own. So um, they've got cash, accounts receivable, some stock. They've also got land and buildings, fixtures and fittings, and, and so on. Okay. Now you can also see that we've uh, divided the assets in terms of the current assets and non-current assets. Current assets simply means the assets that will be turning into cash in the next year, 12 months. And that, that's what these represent. And these assets here, we're going to keep for the longer term. On the other side, um, it looks at how these assets are funded. First of all, by liabilities. In, in another way of putting it, by debt. You can see here that, again, our liabilities are separated by current and non-current. Current meaning that these um, liabilities are going to be have to be paid in the next 12 months or even before then in most cases and uh, non-current liabilities represent debt over a longer term. Uh, mortgage ca uh, commonly can be 20 years or more. Okay, So um, the other form of finance that we have to buy the assets is from the owners obviously um, and they put in the capital, the initial part um, that they put into the business, plus the profits they've had over a period of time, giving us a total um, equity. So in relation to what we're trying to calculate, um, we take the retained profits, which is the profit, and divide that by the total equity that we've got in the business. Now let's do the calculation. So the net profit, as you saw, is 21.500, total equity, 56.5. So that, now let's put that into our ratio formula. Net profit over total equity, um, there it is, 21,000 over 56.500, giving us uh, 30.3805, multiply that by 100 on 1, and I've rounded that up a bit. So our uh, return on equity is 38.1%. What does the rate of return on owner's equity show? Well, the higher the better, obviously. Um, it shows a return on investment by owners. I've said that before. And also I've indicated to you before that 15% is a benchmark. Anything better than that, you're starting to do OK. Um, if it's too low, then we obviously need to increase sales, decrease expenses in order to improve our net profit. So there's similar things I said when we looked at our net profit ratio. 